Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome back to reading set number four. And what we're gonna do in this video is read The Tick, special edition number one. And it's the first appearance of The Tick. And I've been dying to read this comic to you guys. And um, this comic, it came out in March, 1988. And um, it's created by Ben Edlund. And it was, um, it, the ticks, the character first appeared in a newsletter um, by New England Comic Comics. It's a, a comic book chain on the East Coast in the Boston area. And they had a newsletter and they, uh, I believe that I don't, I don't have those <laughs> newsstands, uh, uh, newsletters. I don't know if they're available for buying. I've looked a few times, but I, I haven't been able to find them and if I ever do I'll definitely try to get my hands on them but it was basically a newsletter that uh, New England Comics was putting out and they tested out you know putting out a story with a tick and I believe Ben um, Edlon was sort of a customer at New England Comics and they sort of collaborated together and they put out you know a couple of stories with the tick and then they decided to print um, these special editions this is special edition number one and this is special edition number two okay so this is actually put out by the comic book chain new england comic right a new england comic nec and they put out some other comics um, after this as well i'm not 100 sure if this is the first type of comic that they've put out uh, because they put out some stuff uh, sort of spin-offs from the take and stuff like this but i'm not 100 sure if there was anything before this they printed so this is a tick special edition number one and this is what we're going to read okay and these things were limited to 5,000 print run and this is tick special edition number two and again this was limited to a 5,000 print run i believe 5,000 it might be 3,000 um but i would guess it would be 5,000 we'll we might crack it open and take a look at a numbering because they're sequentially numbered okay so this came out in march 1988 and i believe this came out either a month later or two months later and then this is the tick uh number one issue number one okay and this thing came out in june of 1998 right so tick special edition came out in march and then we have april may june so three months later tick number one came out and this issue tick number one is basically a reprint of the special edition i'm not sure if it's got a couple extra pages in it or not but it's a reprint of the tick special edition right and the tick number one has had multiple multiple printings i don't know um, how many printings is that right now maybe nine maybe ten maybe eight and some of the printings have uh, additional pages added on to them right so this is um I don't know what printing this is. Uh, featuring the first appearance of the take. I don't know which printing this is. This might be the second printing of issue number one, which is this in turn is a reprint of the special edition, right? So this one says four new pages added. Neat. <laughs> That's one thing that Tick says along with a spoon, right? And um, I don't know. For some reason, I don't think I have tick number two this is tick number three okay and i got two copies of tick number three and then tick number four and this is where arthur um has his first appearance and he he's uh tick's sidekick right and uh, from what i understand i haven't seen it yet but supposedly arthur um you can see him in the background in some of the other issues, some of the early issues, but this is considered to be his first full appearance, I guess. The plot fix. And then this is uh, tick number five. <laughs> this is another character that came off from the Tick universe. And there's a whole bunch of zany characters from the Tick comic book series. And this is number six, and I have it all the way up to I have at least three more issues past this, I believe. Okay, I just didn't grab them. Right. And this is, uh, this comic book series is definitely, it was underground when it came out. 
and uh, the tick really became popular for me as well I didn't really the tick really didn't hit my radar uh, initially until well it, it, I knew about it it did hit my radar in the early 1990s but I really didn't get absorbed into the tick universe until the animated series came out because the tick has been it's been very successful it's been rated as uh, you know as as one of the most important comic book superhero characters in the in the comic book realm I guess uh, some people have put it into the top 100 some people have put it in the top 200 and whatnot right some people have even put it in the top 50 most important comic book characters in history right and there's been a there's tons of toys and I actually have uh, a couple of the toys of the tick from the early 1990s uh, but the tick really hit everybody's radar with uh, the animated series that came out in 1994 and that's really when the tick uh, when I fell in love with the tick right that that animated series is absolutely fantastic and if you haven't seen it i highly highly recommend it there's 36 episodes and ran for three seasons okay and it's absolutely brilliant and the voice for the tick is is fantastic right it's beautifully done and then the tick had a you know there was a tv series that came out in 2001 it only ran for one season nine episodes and that tv series was absolutely brilliant as well okay the actor that played it was um, patrick war warburton i can't pronounce his name uh warburton i guess uh, and he did an amazing job portraying the tick really he did a fantastic job i was very very because i was watching that series when it was coming out in uh, 2000 and 2001 and i was so disappointed that it didn't get picked up it didn't continue um i was so sad that it really didn't because i thought it was one, one of the best comic book tv series live um, that had ever been created and if you've been following um what's coming out in uh, tv series they just relaunched um the tick uh, live action series they just released six episodes uh, sort of a pilot episode was put out in 2016 that I watched that I thought was interesting uh, I was curious where they were going to go and I just did a marathon on uh, the first six episodes that came out and I love it it's it's a great series it's a lot darker than what the 2001 and 2000 uh 1994 series the animated series were uh really it's it has a really dark feel to me uh this new series that's kicked off um in 2016 i guess 2017 because that's really when they released it right and they did a little costume change between the pilot episode and episode number two i believe okay and um it's a good series and there's I believe six more episodes to be released in 2018 okay there's only one criticism i have actually with the new series that kicked off we haven't heard the tick say spoon <laughs> and that's sort of his battle cry i can't remember if he said it or not if he said it please let me know i'll check back on the episode and make sure i didn't miss it because um that's sort of a trigger for me um, when the tick goes around saying spoon before he goes into battle right so we're gonna crack this open and take a look at it um, and you know what let's crack this open as well and I'm just gonna show you I'm gonna crack tick number one open as well just to convince you that that's a reprint of this because I really have to do it to myself as well right so let's uh, let's just crack the number two open look at the numbering on this and then we can put it back in the bag And these books, um, the special edition number one and number two, we'll take a look at this. Let's, uh, let's see what this is like. It's a nice copy. Okay, I would grade this. Uh, special edition number two is around 8.5. And the special edition number one, I would grade around an eight. <laughs> cool. And it's beautiful artwork. His artwork is absolutely fantastic. And Ben uh, 
Edlon, he did the art, the script, he did everything for this, right? And this one's numbered 1,095 out of 5,000, I believe. Should be 5,000 anyway. I know the number one is out of 5,000. Um, does this say, does this say? This doesn't say. But this is a nice copy. Okay. I would definitely give this around, well, maybe an eight. I would give both the special edition number one and number two an eight. And this thing's going, uh, you could have bought these on the cheap a few weeks ago. You could have bought it on the cheap, uh, relative cheap anyway, uh, a few years ago. And uh, just to look on the, what was going on with the prices of these things, <laughs> I looked it up and uh, let's put this guy here. I looked this up and the CGC graded, the high grades for this are going for a lot higher prices and the raw copies that aren't graded are going for much more. Uh, a few weeks ago I saw number one and number two, special edition number one and number two, both of them graded around nine, sell for 120 bucks, 140 bucks or so. Uh, I didn't have the funds at that time to buy it, but uh, um, I was already tapped out I was already hit my budget but right now those same books would probably fetch around 250 to 300 right on eBay since the pilot has been released so let's take a look at this we'll keep this in mind okay so this is tick uh, number one from the continuing series okay now we'll just uh, on this one It's a pretty good copy and this was uh, graded better um, oh I need to change the board on this yeah I'll keep a note on this the board is a little dirty and I bought uh, these tick sets um, so take a look at this okay and I bought these tick, these tick comments, a whole lot of them, uh, on eBay, okay, as a lot. And the person, when he shipped it out to me, so we're going to crack this open and just flip just to make sure everything's a reprint, right? And when I, the person shipped it out to me, <laughs> he did, it was the most horrendous shipping, uh, packaging I'd ever received not for the special edition but for the tick continuing series right and uh, it, it was horrendous packaging and the comic I believe got a little bit of damage got a little bit of dings from the shipping so it's one of the few times ever I've only done this twice I believe leaving a negative feedback and I went and left a negative feedback for a person uh, without even contacting them because it was just horrendous horrendous right and then the guy quickly emailed me back and said oh please you know take off the negative feedback he was he was a husband and wife team that were doing selling these books and i said listen uh you know with the emails i said listen you you just threw these in a box without anything and not even a box like a paper package and just shipped them out to me with wrapping that wasn't even wrapped and they'd come loose and the guy goes oh look I'm really sorry could you call eBay and just cancel your negative feedback and I said look man <laughs> you can't do that and the guy what he ended up doing he refunded me the whole everything for all the books and the shipping so he gave me a full refund on the package and says keep the comics so I felt really, really bad. So I called up eBay and I talked with them. It took about half an hour, 45 minutes to jump through the hoops. And I had the negative feedback uh, retracted. And the guy sent me a message saying, thank you very much uh, for calling eBay and taking care of it. So I ended up getting all of these tick books for free. I was gladly willing to pay what I was willing to pay, but 
the guy did a horrendous job. So just a note, if you're ever buying things on eBay, never be afraid to contact the seller. And I've done this one more time. A person sent me a book and he was pulling a scam. And there was a page missing from a book I bought a while ago. And uh, one of the things was loose. And I contacted him and said, hey, listen, there's a page missing in this. It was just an ad page. It was not a story page. I believe it was on a story page. And the guy refunded me half of my purchase of everything, right? Uh, so never be afraid on eBay if you're buying anything to contact a seller and let them know that you're not happy with their uh, their shipment. So you can see this is tick number one and this is special edition and it's a full reprint and this is nice and white and this one is a not as white as this because the paper quality on this is better. The paper quality on this, I believe anyway, is a little bit thinner. Right. So let's just flip through it. We're going to read through this whole thing. I didn't really want to flip through this thing, uh, but I'm just going to flip through it just to make sure there's no extra pages. Right. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful artwork. Like amazing storytelling. Let's see if the these are the same. Oh, this is a little different, right? The letters page, I guess, or the commentary they're giving. And then it goes back to this. Same. Right. Same. Same, same. And this is a character. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's like a parody of uh, Superman. <laughs> he doesn't like the tick. <laughs> so funny, so funny. And let's take a look. Let's take a look. Yeah. Look. Oh, there's a little pin up here. Take a look. This one is uh, special edition number one and two, and this one is a pin up instead of that page, right? So let's take a look at the pin up because we won't get to see it here. <laughs> look at the writing. Your friend, the tick. And this is uh, special edition number two that we pulled out, took a look at the numbering, 1,000 something. And here is tick number two, the ad they have for it, right? And I'm not sure if tick number two is supposed to be, because I don't have it. Uh, or I haven't been able to find it. Tick number two, I don't know if it's supposed to be a reprint of this. It might be. Not 100% sure. And obviously, the text here is a little different. And we're back here, and the back cover is the same. Okay. So just in case, if you're a collector, you're wondering what the difference is between the special edition and number one, uh, looks like there's a pinup difference, right? There's a pinup in number one that there isn't there. The letters page is different. Some of the text is different. The back of the front cover is different, right? So let's close this off. Oops. Better put the tape on it. Actually, it's okay if I gotta change the board for this anyway, right? So let's put this here. Let's put this guy back over here. So they're nice and safe. We'll put on our reading glasses, right? And have a read through this. And let's look at the grade on this again. Um, there's a little bit of scuff mark. It could use a little bit of cleaning, right? So I would grade this at around an eight. 7.5 if I wasn't being generous. 
I would give it an 8.5 if I was being generous. But I would give this uh, an 8. Okay. Nice, solid staples are good. I don't really do any restoration or anything or cleaning of the comics, but there is a way to get rid of some of these scuff marks. Maybe sooner better than later, but we leave. Check like this. He's got it signed here. It's 87, right? And the newsletter, uh, the New England newsletter, um, a comic newsletter that came out, it came out in 1986. So the first appearance of The Tick, this is a little dirty, the first appearance of The Tick is uh, in 1986 in newsletter format, which for comic books is really not, well, certain things go for, I'm pretty sure that things, if there's any copies around, there probably is. It's probably going for a hefty sum. And I personally would pay a hefty sum for it to acquire it, right? But this is the first appearance of the tick and all of these are, <laughs> are the characters. This is Electra's spoof and that's a Superman spoof. Uh, what else do we got here? We got a whole bunch of characters here. These are ninjas. Awesome. So, let's have a read through this. The Tick Specialist. And these are large format. Um, I should have brought a, like a regular comic book just to show you that regular comic book's smaller than this. So these are like, they're even bigger than Golden Age, I think. Or it could be Golden Age size. Nice. Nice white pages. Beautiful. Let's read the fine print of this. And then uh, we'll read the TikTok as uh, the TikTok as well, okay? And this is uh, this is number three thousand one hundred twenty-five, okay? It's a limited edition of five thousand copies. And let's read the fine print. The Tick Special Edition Number 1, March 1988, published by New England Comics Press, P.O. Box 1424, Brockton, Massachusetts, 02403. The Tick is trademark and copyright 1988 by Ben Edlund. All other materials is copyright 1998 by New England Comics Press. All rights reserved, no similarities between any of the names, characters, and or institutions in this publication with those of any living or dead person or institution is intended and any such similarity which may exist is purely coincidental printed in the good old u.s of a by american by bonds <laughs> right. right to TikTok. here it says right so let's have a read through uh just this letter the first little uh, page they have so we get a feel for what the tick is right and we'll have a good feel of it um, when we read the comic welcome to the tick special edition what you hold in your hands is one of five thousand specially special serially numbered copies of this deluxe edition of the tick number one this publication is being distributed only through New England Comics. Many of you have ordered this comic through NEC ads and catalogs as an ordinary issue number one. We've printed this special edition as our way of saying thanks for your support. If the tick becomes the popular character which we expect he will be, you hold in your hands a real collector's item, his very first comic book appearance. 
So who or what is the tech? Well, he's the creation of a young artist by the name of Ben Edlond. Ben created tech as a joke at first. He had noticed with some discomfort while on a nature outing that ticks have a number of superhero type qualities. For one, they're virtually indestructible. It's almost impossible to crush a tick. See the trail page later in this issue. Um, and, and like most insects, they can fall from great heights and walk away from the landing with nary a hair out of place. Of course, they have some nasty traits also. They, they burrow under your skin and take sustenance by sucking blood. You'll find here that Ben's tick has a figurative way of getting under people's skin. Does he also suck blood? We'll learn about that in due course. In these quali qualities, Ben saw the potential for an interesting comic book character and did some sketches. How did New England Comics end up publishing the tick? Well, I'm one of the owners of NEC, and like so many people involved in comics, I've always harbored the notion of publishing my own comic book. However, unlike so many amateur publishers, I haven't wanted to put my name on my company's or my company's name on anything that wasn't top notch. For the longest time, I was unable to find any project which was really special. Then one summer day, I walked into NEC, a Brockton location, and noticed a little sketch placed upon the store's bulletin board. Uncrushable, unstoppable, the tick. It was crude compared to what you'll find in these pages, but very intriguing. I contacted the artist, discussed various project possibilities, and as they say in Hollywood, the tick was born. So what's the tick all about? I'm going to let Ben tell most of the story in the pages of this and subsequent issues. I will say here that Mr. Edlund has a well-developed storyline which runs through at least the next 10 installments of I, for one, eagerly look forward to upcoming issues. Herein, you, I'll give you a few sneak peeks. Issue number two completes the tale whose beginning you are about to read the thick tick is entitled it is titled the third tick the thing the third tick is entitled night of a million zillion ninjas in which the tick tackles the city's peculiar vermin problem over proliferation of martial artists in the course of this confrontation he meets Oedipus a young female ninja of, as Ben puts it, extraordinary ineptitude. You may be able to pick out Odi as she's known to her friends on the back cover. In fact, number of characters popping up in future Tick pagers are showcased on this Tick family portrait. Around the fifth or sixth issue, the Tick deals with militant, militant armed Amish Crusaders and a hideous monster known as, known as the Almond Blight Beast, which emerges from beneath a Massachusetts parking lot to terrorize New England. After that, the tick travels to Mars, where he meets Edgar, warlord of, and to 1930s Paris, where he uh, tangles with some bad guy Nazi and a variety of pulp style heroes with matters being complicated by the same kind of tickish communication screw screw ups you'll be encountering in this issue how does it take get back from mars and from 30s france hey what can't tell we can't tell you everything now in fact for all i know he never gets back. I do know that sometime during his adventures, he'll encounter a criminal mastermind 
who happens to be a dolphin, a Roman god who knows all about aqueducts, another evil genius who's an infant, a vigilante lunatic whose favorite weapon is a chainsaw, and a certain winged wonder whose first appearance, if you look close, can continue on inside back cover. Inside back cover. So, um, a certain winged wonder whose first appearance, if you look close, can can be seen in this very issue. In fact, in every issue of the tick, it makes real good sense to watch the background in action. Ben's backgrounds are definitely not just decorative. If you get caught up in the action during your first read, be sure to get go back and study everything one more time. It'll be well worth your while eventually. Right? And what he's talking about there is Arthur, I believe. Right? At this point, at this point, a few of you may be thinking that the tick is just another parody comic. Well, I can, with all n n sincerity, tell you that's the furthest thing from the truth. Certain, certainly, there are parody elements in the tick, but Ben's in incisive, tre incisive treatment of certain comic book truisms and axioms is hardly, hardly the essence hardly the essence of the comic ninjas don't appear in the tick to increase sales if that were true we'd plaster them all over the crop cover they appear in these pages because ben considers their overuse in comics to be something worth commenting upon the same can be said for a lot of comic book cliches which will be lampoon in future issues the tick is infinitely more than the sum of a few par paradoxical parts. As the tick himself, as the tick says himself, I am not a roach, I am a tick. And that makes all the difference. I think that's enough of a sneak preview for this issue. Let me assure you that there's lots more. For instance, we haven't even begun to touch upon why the tick was in an insane asylum or how he escaped or who the tick is or was before he became the in the inevitable tick or for that matter if he's really wearing a costume could he actually be a man-sized insect mutation beats me Ben doesn't tell everything even to his publisher now now that I've whetted your appetite, I should tell you when, when more Tick stories will become available. Current plans are for this special edition to be followed by a regular Tick number one, which will be distributed through normal comic store channels. This will be basically the same as the special edition, but with slightly different editorial content. The regular number one will be out real soon, probably in late April. There will be a special edition number two available in April or May. To other, to order either special edition, see the ad elsewhere in this issue. Then we hope the tick will s tick to to every other month's schedule. In fact, if we can find the fast inker whose style is compatible with Ben Ben's pencils, we will attempt monthly publication but no promises and somewhere along the line ex expect to see a tick number zero in which we will try to get Ben to relate some of ticks pre tick experiences if you've ordered the tick through the mails rest assured you'll find out what these projects via our tick mailing list if not send your name or address to the tick The Tick, New England Comics Press, PO Box 1424, uh, Brockton, Massachusetts, 20403. Right. Our last bit, last bit of information 
For those of you who want every single appearance of the tick, let me say that the very, very first time the tick appeared in print was in back issues of New England Comics newsletter. A single page illustrating his escape from the asylum appeared in number 14, July, August 1986, followed by a one page on the lamb interlude in number 15, September, October. A small Christmas illustration appeared in number 16, November, December. At that point, Ben began to concentrate his energies on developing the comic book. Please note that the pre-tick story, which will eventually be told in the tick comics, may well differ from that described in these early experimental newsletter appearances. We have limited quantities left of these new newsletter back issues. Oh, I wish I could have got some. Rather than sell them, we will send the complete set for free upon request to anyone ordering a one year or longer newsletter subscription. See the centerfold for ordering information. We will provide originals of these issues as long as our back issues last and afterwards send photocopies of the tick appearances. First come, first serve, and only one set per subscriber, please. Finally, Ben himself and everybody at NEC Press are eager to hear your opinions on the tick. The tick talk page is for you. Send your letters to the address at the top of the page. The best letter each issue will be awarded an autograph page of original tick art. Oh my God, I wish I could get my hands on that. George Sures, editor, NEC Press, February 23rd, 1988. Uncrushable, unstoppable, the tick. The world's first glimpse of the tick. Ah, so this was the first sketch of the tick, I guess. Cool. Let's have a read through. Bored, 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 bored. I've only been here two months and I'm already bored. One unnecessary sedation, no electroshock therapy, not even ele elevator music. This place has become confining somehow. I feel restrained. <laughs> it's an in insane asylum, all tied up in the loony bin jacket. And yet, I sense my destiny is at hand. Things are changing, and a brilliant idea has come to me. I will leave this place. <laughs> nice splash pages. Really beautiful art. The city calls me, it cries to me of its need, and as I approach it, antenna twitching in anticipation, I see the city for what it is. A big place with lots of buildings and lots of rooftops to jump around them. That's what I do, I'm a superhero, and the city needs me. Destiny is a funny thing. Once I thought I was destined to become Emperor of Greenland, sole monarch over its 52,000 inhabitants. Then I thought I was destined to build a Polynesian longship in my garage. I was wrong then, but I've got it now. I'm the destined protector of this place. I'm this city's superhero. <laughs> I 
Fuck the most. Awesome. I especially like the part about dancing across rooftops. Crack. Does a lot of damage. I'm like a god when I do that. People say that I'm out of touch with reality, that I'm insane. Sometimes I forget things, who I am, where I am, unimportant things, but I'm not insane. <laughs> Crush, I'm a tick, he says. There's crime here, I can smell it. All is in readiness. Secret crime viewer engaged. And I am too, in readiness I mean. Now wait, click. Oh, the age of dinosaurs. And wait, he's looking through this uh, little, tick, tick, the, I forget what you call them, when you put that round thing in the, cam in the camera and you clicked it on the side, this old school, click it on the side and the thing rotates and shows you stuff. Wait. One more time, old man. Where is Oedipus? Crumble. Smack. You cannot keep the truth from Ninja. Crash. What? He crashes through the roof. Accidentally stumbles onto the Eric, I think my secret crime viewer is broken. He's still flipping it. Beautiful. You have made a grave mistake, fool. Yeah, I know. I thought the roof would hold me. You guys should really get rid of these fluorescent lights. You're losing all your vitamin D. Wait a minute. You guys are all ninjas. Ninjas, I can't stand them. They're everywhere. Attack him. Yeah, parry, thrust, dodge. Haiku, haiku, hi. All right, guys, I've had just about enough. Texas. 
I said quit it. Boop. It's super powerful. Just sends the ninja flying. Just a slap. Backhand. Help me. Thump, crush, maim. Beating up the ninjas. Sorry, citizen. There's crime out there. And I've got to fight it. <laughs> it jumps through the through the window and breaks it. After him. Well, jump. I'm not going to jump, you jump, the ninja says. of the White House. It works. Click. Ha ha. He says. I'll bounce off that flagpole and flip the safety. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Snap. Whoa, 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 whoa. Click. He's still clicking his thing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ah. I'll bounce off that broad, flat surface. <laughs> A lot of pain. series the uh, TV series out they do this sketch they do this sketch it's pretty cool wait a minute the text says there's no crime here Well, gee, this thing doesn't seem to work very well. He's looking at his camera. I <laughs> think still going, whoa, 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 whoa. What the hell are you, huh? The tick says. What the hell are you? The homeless guy asks again. I'm a superhero. Check out the homeless guy's face. Oh, ho. a superhero. Well, I guess you would be after living through a fall like that. You're invulnerable, eh? No. The thing's still going. Whoa, 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 whoa. The ninjas are coming down. I'm nigh invulnerable. Nigh. What the hell is nigh? <laughs> I am ninja. I am invincible. Me too, me too, he says. The ninjas say. If you're a superhero, then why aren't you out saving the world? The homeless guy says. Infidel, I will kill you. The ninja. I don't know. I think I'm trying to develop my character. <laughs> Take replies. And what's going on with that costume? <laughs> Ninja falls down. <laughs> it's the pavement. <laughs> Takes 
start looking around. What's going on? Costume. What costume? <laughs> Me too. Ninja in the background. Thought. The thing's still going. Whoa, 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 whoa. Too funny. Too funny. I mean, what are you supposed to be? You some kind of roach or something? <laughs> what? Some kind of what? The thing gets angry. Oh, I am not a roach. I am a tick, the tick says. Wubba, wubba, wubba. The thing's still going. In fact, I, uh, I've never seen a roach in my life. <laughs> okay, okay, I didn't mean nothing by cheese. The homeless guy says. <laughs> so you're a tick, huh? Say, didn't you escape from an insane asylum a couple of weeks back? My mind reels and spins as the speed of light, at the speed of light, as I search for the perfect response. <laughs> perfect alibi for the past two weeks. No. answer completely negative. <laughs> and no one could mistake that for a yes <laughs> what a screw <laughs> too funny too funny Let's continue on with this story. Let's take a look at this. If you're tech, then why are you blue? No more talking. I'm getting bored with you. Be quiet. Shh. Shut up. Pat, pat, pat. Wop, wop, wop. Shit. The homeless guy says, Ark. <laughs> the ninja guy goes through the wall, hits the wall. <laughs> he throws all of them into the wall. <laughs> throws the homeless guy over his shoulder. <laughs> that was close. They might not be a brilliant. I might not be so brilliant next time, he says. Maybe I should get one of those secret identities. I wish I could find some crime fight, crime to fight. Says. Look at the homeless guy's eyes looking out. What's going on? Oh, there's Arthur. Check it out. There he is right there. Cool. He becomes his sidekick. Full appearance in issue number four, I believe. Right? Cool. We found Arthur. And it goes into, I think this is a Norman Rockwell painting. I can't remember who did this painting. Hoppers. What are you, some kind of weirdo? No, I'm a tick. A what? I'm a tick. You're a buck. <laughs> tick. <laughs> you ain't no tick. <laughs> T. 
ticks are arachnids. They got eight legs. You haven't got eight legs. What are you, an expert? The tick says. Do you suck blood? <laughs> what? <laughs> ticks suck blood. Do you suck blood? <laughs> or, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I suck blood all the time. <laughs> I don't believe you, the guy says. I got a straw right here, pal. <laughs> you want a demonstration? <laughs> Look at the guy, he's cowering. He's like, what's going on? Takes holding a straw. <laughs> he was a straw in his mouth. <laughs> Flip, flip. Don't think, didn't think so, he says. It took. Easy, big fella, easy. Restaurant owner says. So you're a tick. So what? I mean, I get all kinds here. Imperial Romans, extraterrestrials, time-traveling fish. You think, a, you think being a tick is bad? Try being a walking dead. Oh, walking dead. Gee, no thanks. Yeah, well, see what I mean, right? Guy says. Everyone's got their own problems, buddy. Hell, I still get visions from my previous life as Theodore Roosevelt's daughter. Being a tick, it's a problem, it's an honor. You can't be Alice. You can't be Alice Roosevelt. She's dead. She was a woman. You can't be. You, you can't be no dead woman. <laughs> he's talking like he's like a <laughs> <It's like, laughs> <laughs> Never mind. The guy says. Oh, the restaurant owner likes to take. So tired all of a sudden, he says. Tick. Well, you're bound to get lightheaded, sucking air through a straw like that. <laughs> you all right, buddy? <laughs> buddy. Too funny, too funny. Let's check it out. Ah, oh, he's blacking out. Ah, uh, blacked out again. Gee, it sure is dark in here. Beautiful artwork. Absolutely beautiful artwork. Where he doesn't know where he is. I must be in a whale. Great Scott, someone's in the tunnel and the train's coming. <laughs> must be in a whale. <laughs> he's in a subway tunnel. <sighs> I only have seconds. This is like the Superman spoof guy. Kate Wonder, Stun City, Weekly, World Planet. Cool. Too many people here. I won't be able to change into my costume. I can't risk revealing my secret identity. But I've got to help, the helpless. Right wrongs and stand for truth, justice, and the American way. Damn, I should write this stuff down. Got to use my very quick speed to move faster than the eye can follow. Hope away, he says.
hmm, I'm not too up on my whale anatomy, but I don't recall them having two metal rails in their stomach. It's probably a blue whale. Wait a minute. <laughs> it's three rails in here. <laughs> that's danger. That's the one that's electricity on it, I guess. Here comes the Superman Springs dude guy. Zit, he touches it. Zowie, he electrocutes himself. Quickly, citizen, we're almost out of time. My God, a gigantic, well dressed, digestive enzyme. <laughs> I am in a way. Please, citizen, the train is almost here. Hey, hands off, the tick says. No, you don't understand. I'm a superhero. I have to save you. Beautiful. Hee <laughs> hee, nice try. You're <laughs> There's the train coming in the background. Say, what? <laughs> Says. He's got a smile on his face. Look at that. Bam. Funny. Ark. Eric. <laughs> Thrown around. Rumble. Thud. Rumble. Clang. Rumble. Clang. Choo choo. Loud noise from rumble. <laughs> Alright, give me a nice look at these pages or these panels. Darn it, I hate getting run over by trains, the text says. <laughs> this is happening, this guy says. There goes his shoes. Come out of the tunnel. They got thrown off the bridge. Crumble. Thud. Tickets to ground hard. Hey, wait a minute. That was a subway back there. So you're invulnerable too, huh? I'm nigh invulnerable. Too bad, the guy says. Oh God, I'm late. Perry's going to kill me. Damn. Maybe I could fly around the earth at unheard of speeds and reverse time. That's a spoof of Superman movie, right? The first one with Christopher Reeve. Fantastic movie. No, I did that last week. Damn. So, the take asks. You're a superhero too, huh? You got a secret identity? Wince. Listen to me very carefully. I am Clark Oppenheimer, mild manner reporter. Got that? You don't look like a reporter to me, Clark. Clark? Clark? Come back. You forgot your hat. <laughs> high rise, high jinx. Next issue. Awesome, awesome, awesome. What a fantastic read. 
What a fantastic read. Let's read this as well. This last page. Take a look at this. Mac Trill by M. Dodd and Jack L. Rod. Ah, so it's not uh, Ben Edlund. Ticks are, ticks are small eight-legged parasites that prey on man and pests alike. There's a tick right there. Pony thing. They come off easily with a little s salad or mineral oil, but I prefer to just rip them out. Sparky doesn't mind. Yep. The dog yelps. Look at it. Look at its hee -hee, horrible chitinous body. Its tiny flailing legs. Takes the flailing, flailing legs. See? That didn't hurt at all, did it, Sparky? No, sir. Grrr. The dog is all pissed. The funny thing about ticks is that they're nigh incrushable. Try as you might, the buggers don't just don't smush. <laughs> Look at the tick, same piss off. Now, some folks like to inhale them or <laughs> on needles or such, but I like to wrap them in Kleenex and burn them. <laughs> um, Sparky, is that you, boy? The tick's standing behind me. That's funny. Special edition number one and two. The tick special edition number one is limited to 5,000 serially numbered copies and available only through New England Comics. It will never be reprinted in this form. The Tick Special Edition number one is 32 pages printed on super white offset stock with 100 pound double glossy four color covers. Hey, we don't have to tell you, you're holding one right now. Tick Special Edition number two will be available soon. It will continue the adventures of the Tick in the hectic world of big time crosswords. The Tick Special Edition number two will be limited to 5,000 serially numbered copies in the same format as special edition number one we are accepting advanced orders now order for the tick comics other foreign foreign should send five dollars per copy canadian customers three dollars let's read that if you want to order tick number one special edition tick special edition number one and or tick special edition number two by themselves not as a part of a regular mail order see send a dollar fifty plus one dollar shipping 250 total per copy order canadian customers should send three dollars per copy other foreign should send five dollars per copy cool very cool there's a tick special edition number two let me wrap that and we saw this guy right and we saw the ninjas Lots and lots of ninjas, right? And there's Arthur. Fantastic read, fantastic read. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoy it. Tick special edition number one. That's it for now. I'll see you guys in the next video.